Um, everyone, hi, my name is Maggie Baker. I am the creative, creative talent manager here at Fuse Effects. Um, I've been uh, working as a recruiter and um, HR professional for, I guess, almost 20 years now, and specifically in visual effects since 2005. So I've uh, been at a lot of um, studios, different studios over the years, uh, feature side, um, television, et cetera, and joined Fuse back in 2019. So I've been here a little over a year and a half. It's been a really fun ride. I think the company has some exciting things happening. Um, we're continuing to grow and I love helping people um, find their dream careers. And I love entertainment and art. So it's kind of a nice, um, combination for me. So I'm happy to be here speaking with you all today. Thanks. Annie. Hi, everyone. I am the human resources manager here at Fuse in New York. So I work, um, you know, with our New York population on both recruitment and HR generalist initiatives. So I work very closely with um, Steve's counterpart, um, in New York, our head of 2D and our head of 3D and bringing on compositors and CG generals and so forth. And I'm very excited to be here today to meet you all. Hi everyone, my name is Ty Coyle. I'm a global talent partner with FuseFX. Uh, for the last seven years, I've been working as a character animator on uh, feature animated films and um, a bunch of different commercial projects. Uh, so I work in recruitment now, and I'm, I recently joined Fuse Effects about a month ago, so I'm very excited to chat with everyone. Awesome, Steve. Hi, everyone. My name is Steve Summers. Uh, I'm also a global talent partner. Recently joined Fuse FX, uh, probably about three months ago, and my background is production in television and films. Uh, so a little bit about us, FuseFX is an industry leading visual effects studio providing visual effects services for episodic television, feature films, commercials, virtual and VR productions. We are a eight full service uh, studio with uh, uh, different locations in eight different places, including recent acquisition of Folks Effects and Rising Sun Pictures. Our proprietary pipeline nucleus enables resource and project management with unmatched efficiency. We have precise tracking of talent assignments, shop details, and resource utilization. Uh, we have a philosophy of hiring seasoned world-class artists and supervisors. So our staff averages over 16 years of visual effects experience across the company. And collectively, we have won a combined three Oscars, three BAFTAs, eight Emmys, four VES awards, seven HBA awards, and a myriad of other accolades. Awesome. Great. Steve uh, Summers is going to talk to us a little bit more about our filmography and introduce our reel. So here, here we go. Um, the If you've seen a lot of action on the Umbrella Corp, um, excuse me, Umbrella Academy and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. 911, you've seen muzzle flashes, you've seen, you know, some gore. That was definitely us on Ozark. Um, yeah, so we've been very involved with a lot of the streaming that you're currently watching. Fantastic. All right, go ahead and show the reel. Yeah, here we go with the reel.
Woohoo! How exciting was that, everybody? Huh? Give some. I can't. I didn't create the work, but I can plot it. Help. Good stuff. Hire the people to do it. Right. Good stuff. Whew. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit now about some of our kind of core, our vision and our our uh, purpose and our core values. So this is the stuff that we try to keep in mind um, as kind of our guiding principles that lead us, you know, in what we're doing, right? So some of these are actually pretty new. We've been working on getting these out to the organization. So you guys are kind of seeing it on the very early side. So I'll start with the vision. Our vision, uh, which is kind of like our aspirational statement, something we're always looking to achieve and reminding ourselves of why we're all here, which is essentially to provide infinite storytelling through the fusion of art, technology, and creativity. So what do we do? We help storytellers do what they do best, right? Without us, you can have buildings exploding and monsters flying across the screen, right? So we we exist here to help storytellers to do what they do best. And we do that through the fusion of art and technology and creativity. So it's through, you know, really pushing the boundary on our artistic skills, hiring the best of the best in terms of our art, artists, pushing the boundaries on technology, really coming up with that best pipeline. And also in terms of creativity, not just being creative in the work, but also how we approach the work. Right, so we're always trying to kind of push the envelope forward in terms of how we do things. Like, um, tie in for the next one. In terms of our purpose, it's a bit of a mouthful. I'll try and say it sort of fast. We're on a quest to create the next generation of visual effects studios. That will consist of a tightly integrated global network of elite studios, each creating unprecedented imagery through exceptional employee and client experience while contributing to and benefiting from connection and collaboration across the global organization. Okay, so essentially what we're trying to do here is we're trying to create a global experience leveraging all of our studios, including our sister studios, but also really providing that boutique experience to our clients, right? And, and also to our employees. So it's kind of that small feeling, but also that really global expansive reach. All right, we'll talk a little bit about our values now. So these are kind of what we've landed on in terms of our core values as a company, um, our four core. Now, obviously there's, there's more that we try to do and strive to, but we wanted to boil it down to these four to really kind of be our, our core um, four of them. Engage, empathize, collaborate, and create. So I'm gonna give you a few bullets for each of them. Engage, we want um, people to be entrepreneurial, take risks and treat the business as it was your own. How we respond to problems or mistakes is more important than not making them at all. For empathize, know your audience, be, present meaningful solutions based on their needs and their focus. Practice inclusion and diversity in viewpoints, ideas, and as well as team dynamics. Understand that our unique differences make us stronger. In terms of collaborate, always remember that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Inspire and be inspired. Lead through example and recognize the example of others around you. For create, at the heart of creating is bringing something that didn't exist, that into existence that didn't exist before. This is the heart of what we do as artists and professionals working at this company. Create unprecedented images that tell a story. So those are some kind of bullets to kind of elaborate what we're talking about here in terms of these core values. All righty. All right, um, in terms of our sister, one of our new sister studios is Folks VFX. We're very, very excited to add them to the Fuse family. Um, Folks joined us back in 2020, back in March of last year, kind of right around when the pandemic started actually. Um, but they've been an amazing partner. They um, have headquarters in Montreal and then other studios in Toronto as well as Bogota. So three international locations, a team of around 160 artists, um, spec full spectrum of VFX for film and television. Um, and that reel that you saw a few, you know, obviously the reel you just saw was actually a combination of both folks and fuse effects work together. So that's a little bit more about um, folks. And Ty is going to talk to us about our other exciting new sister company that just joined. So we just uh, 
uh, acquired Rising Sun Pictures in 2021. Uh, and Rising Sun Pictures creates inspirational visual effects for major studios worldwide. And they have uh, worked on many big Hollywood blockbusters and contributed to visual effects to about 120 different movies. Uh, they come from humble beginnings and the company was founded in May of 1995 by Tony Clark, Gail Fuller and Wayne Lewis, who named it after the Rising Sun Inn in Adelaide, Australia, where the first board meeting was held over a Cooper's Ale. And Rising Sun Pictures has achieved some truly amazing, technically challenging work, and they've built a team of artists who are among the best in the world. Um, they have over two decades on uh, that they've worked on, and they're proud to be one of the most well-established visual effects companies in the world. And so now I'm going to show a reel of some of their work. excited. We are all very thrilled to have them joining the family. It's amazing to have such a world-class studio as Rising Sun joining our family uh, here at Fuse. We're just thrilled. Um, so this slide is a bit more about our executive leadership. Obviously, we have very amazing talent um, and we just have a few of the key heads here. Um, 
so I'll uh, talk to you a little bit about a few of these folks. So you're looking at um, executives from all three of our uh, companies, Fuse, Folks, as well as Rising Sun Pictures. The three gentlemen on your top left, Dave, Jason, and Tim, are the three co-founders uh, of Fuse Effects. So they have that story of starting it in there. Well, there's kind of some, you know, it's back and forth between a living room and a garage. I think probably it was both locations at one point or another. Um, and they're still very actively involved in the company today. Dave's still our CEO. Jason uh, started as actually as an artist. He was a, you know, a compositor and now he's our CTO. So he started kind of learning more about the tech side and went down that direction. And now he's our, yeah, our head of technology. Tim was our original producer. And now he, uh, you know, is our head of uh, clients and, and um, you know, outreach. Jim Rigel, some of you may recognize his face if you've watched any of the uh, Lord of the Rings uh, trilogies and the behind the scenes. He's um, was the visual effects supervisor on those as well as some other key films. I was actually just watching Night at the Museum the other day with my or night with my son, and that was fun to see his name there. So he's he's uh, definitely a legendary. Um, uh, VFX soup in the industry. Johnny Fisk, head of our studio uh, in LA, as well as global head of production. Sebastian is our head uh, senior, uh, pre sorry, president and senior VFX soup for folk. So he's really the leader on the folk side. Amelie, head of production for folks. Michaela is the head of the studio for the Toronto location in folks. Then you get back over to Fuse. We have John, Brad, and Greg. They're all respectively heads of studio for Fuse in each location. So John Callie is our head of studio in BC, Brad head of studio in Atlanta, Greg head of studio in New York, Dan oversees executive operations for all of our Fuse uh, studios. Jessica Perry is our uh, fearless leader in HR. She's the VP of People and Culture. And now we have three new faces to add, very exciting, Tony, Wayne, and Gil, Tony Clark, Wayne Lewis, and Gil Fuller, who are all co-founders and executive leaders over at Rising Sun Pictures. So a little bit of an um, overview there of our senior leadership team. All right. All right, Annie, you're up. Awesome. So um, to talk a little bit more about our, our studio location. So we were founded in um, you know, 2006 in LA. Um, that's where our headquarters are. Um, in New York um, and actually Vancouver as well, we expanded um, into those two locations in 2014. And actually in New York, we recently just moved into a much bigger space, kind of double the size, I believe. And, you know, as we kind of continue to grow and scale um, here. And then in Atlanta, um, joined us actually in 2019. Um, so that kind of is the, the um, makeup of views here. Um, and then with folks um, who joined us in 2020, they are based in Montreal, in Toronto and Bogota. Um, and Rising Sun, who is our most recent, recent addition, um, is in Australia. Cool. And this is a little bit of a kind of a snapshot of all the different offices and how we're, we've continued to kind of expand globally as well. All right. Thank you. Um, Steve, Mr. Steve Meyer is going to talk to us a little bit more about um, some of the ser key services here we do at uh, the company. Steve. Hi again, everybody. Uh, so are all the fuse effects um, all of our facilities are full service facilities, which means we provide a lot of different things. Um, and I'm going to kind of go through them really quick. Um, one is pre-visualization services, and you may already kind of know what the, what these are, but uh, this is uh, something that's becoming more and more uh, used, especially in heavy CG shows because it costs a lot of money and a lot of time to do final visual effects for like a Marvel movie or something. So a previs is basically a step above a storyboard where we start to use rudimentary CG models and animation to try and tell the story. So the director and the, the people with the money and the crew can all see where the end product is because when you're on set and you've got CG characters and things like that, you got green screen or, or, you know, or nothing. So this kind of shows everybody what you're going, what the director's vision is. So everybody's on the same page. Um, budget and planning. 
sometimes we get clients uh, basically that need some help with the with the overall budget and planning of their show. So we take the scripts and we will go through them and figure out the best way to, to achieve um, their effects, whether it's practical or whether it's visual effects, CG, um, or a combination of both. And then we sit down and work with them so everybody's on the same page when it comes to uh, trying to plan out the, the shooting schedule. Um, onset supervision, the sometimes we su they already have a supervisor that's provided by production and we just take the material and uh, do the shots that they want. But we also have a, a large crew in, including Jim Rigel, as you, as you saw, who are involved right from the beginning of the pre-pro um, and help design the shots. And then we go out to the set and we work with them to make sure that we get all the proper elements that we need to do the shots correctly. Um, then we're also getting heavily involved in virtual production using, um, uh, we use Unreal Engine, that's becoming more and more popular. Um, and then we also have a lot of digital crowd duplication we've, be, we've been doing. And this has become um, uh, almost like a specific area that we're focusing on now because of the whole um, uh, pandemic situation in the world you can't have that many people on a set so even the old way of like if you're going to uh, put a crowd into a stadium we used to shoot individual tiles of, of a group of 500 extras and we'd move them around in different areas and we combine them all on a computer well you can't really get that many people now together so we've moved into digital people and it's becoming a, a very popular way to do things Editorial review, um, we're, we're not an editing house, but we have editors and we have edit uh, capabilities. So we can take your material, we can take the client's materials and massage them or uh, uh, do, ed do reviews with them um, using our edit systems. Uh, concept and storyboarding, we have departments where um, uh, they, you, a director can come in and just give somebody an idea about an alien or some sort of vehicle that they want to use that's high tech or something. And, but that's not their thing. They can't visualize, they need help. So we have experts who thrive on that kind of stuff. They have crazy imaginations. So we just kind of put that in their laps and they just come up with some amazing drawings. And then the director's like, yeah, that's exactly what went on or they can actually collaborate. And then we can take those concepts and uh, build storyboards out of them. And then once that's approved, then we can actually move into creating them, creating CG models and doing proper animation and everything. Um, then we have driving composites. Uh, this is another thing that's kind of an efficient way to do things when you have uh, a heavy, heavy scenes involving conversations in cars. Um, it's very complicated and difficult to actually shoot in a vehicle that's moving. Um, so a lot of times we just, put green screen on a stage and then we shoot shoot the, the people with the green screen out the car windows. And then we add the backgrounds uh, of the moving environment. And it's also becoming more and more popular with, uh, with uh, using Unreal Engine in LED panels in a, on a stage. So it becomes a real time composite where we play the material of the environment going by and then we can shoot through the car and we we um, and then um, you get the proper lighting and reflections. So it may cost a little bit more up front for the clients, but in the end, they can do take after take after take and then choose later because the comps are already done. Um, then another thing that uh, we, we do a lot of is cosmetic enhancement, and it's also called beauty beauty work um, that could be anything from. Removing the wrinkles. Um, I worked in an Ozzy Osbourne music video years ago, and I spent a lot of time removing all his crow's feet and the bags under his eyes, and then the the turkey neck. Um, just that's what we call it. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of that. Some people have it written in their contract that they need to be enhanced. So we've been doing a lot of that, and we also do in in part of that is also um, de aging. Um, I just did a show where somebody had to be shown in a scene 20 years earlier. So we had to go in there and make them look more youthful. 
Um, then we also have photo real 3D animation and effects. Um, and that's basically taking, that's what we do in CG. We create photo real things that you cannot tell that that car is fake. That car going off a cliff is, is created in CG. Um, and we call that photo real. And then um, uh, so we create the models, we do the lighting, and then we put it in the scene. And, you know, that's how most of those high end movies are, are done. Um, it's, it's not practical to go out and shoot, uh, shoot um, that kind of stuff with real cars. When people out there, there's a lot of safety things. So a lot of it's becoming uh, more of a, a CG environment that we're creating. Um, then we have motion capture and CG character animation. It used to be where we'd have a CG character um, that was created and we'd have to hand animate every, everything that all his movement. And now you have, you've seen those suits, you've seen those avatar uh, uh, behind the scenes things where they show the people in the suits with all the sensors and things. So we can have them kind of do the action and we can take that data that all those sensors are picking up and apply it to the model. And then we get real life action. So we don't have to go in, we still have to finesse it, but we don't have to go in and actually build every single move. Um, and then we have matte painting and digital environments. And that's, this is kind of falls back to the, uh, um, with the concept people, we have people that just have amazing artistic and imagination skills. So if you want to see a uh, alien landscape, um, like, like Avatar, I'll use that again, uh, like Avatar, well, there's somebody there that's coming up with all those plants and things like that. And we can do that, uh, the, 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 histor the, the, the old way of using Photoshop, we do a lot of that, or we can do it in a computer using CG and you create, you could create the environment. There's programs that create trees, uh, we can create the buildings and then it becomes kind of a 3D environment. So you can actually fly through things. Um, so at almost every show now has some sort of matte painting or digital environment in it. And then the final step is actually where my department is a compositing finishing. So when I'm talking about all these CG elements and uh, when you shoot plates and all that, it all funnels down to the compositor and it's their job to take all these elements, blend them together uh, and add all the interactivity of dust and um, uh, those kind of things to make it look real, to make it look photo real, and to complete the director's vision. So thank you very much. Amazing. Thank you, Steve. Yay. That was great. Uh, gave a really good understanding of all the things we do. Keeps us keeps the studio yeah. very busy. Yeah. Um, awesome. Brian uh, is going to talk to us a little bit more about what makes our pipeline unique here at Fuse Effects. Brian. Sure. Um, yeah. Here's the, the the Fuse Effects pipeline. It's um, we we've been developing it now uh, a brand new one actually for the last two and a half years. Um, it is going to be absolutely state of the art. Uh, we are currently using it in production, but it is it is in a state of, of constant development. Um, and, and we feel like it's, it's gonna be, you know, the best in the industry. Um, but uh, I'll go through the bullet points. Uh, corporate leadership supported by long tenured employees and artists, including supervisors, production management, producers, CG and comp talent. Uh, talent is key. Uh, it's something that we, we, we cherish here at Fuse and, and at our sister companies. Uh, global flexibility based on client needs, geographic tax incentives, and individual skill sets. This, this goes back to the fact that we have eight locations uh, between Fuse and its sister companies. This allows us to take advantage of uh, global tax incentives, but also allows us to take advantage of local talent uh, because talent is global. And so Fuse effects and its sister companies are also global. Um, strong experience and dynamic fluid view, uh, effect simulations, hard body and character CG animation, digital crowd work, and all compositing types. Uh, that goes back to our, our, our pipeline as well, where all these different parts of the company can interact and work together. Um, that's one of the, the things that we're really trying to develop with our new pipeline is to have it be truly DCC agnostic. And what that means is that whatever software you happen to use we want to support it 
and all those software packages can communicate with each other. So if you happen to be a Maya artist or Max artist or a Nuke artist or, or Mario, whatever it is that, you, that your skill set is adept in, adept in, we want to be able to support that and have that work be interchangeable with everyone else seamlessly. And so that's where all the effort is going into our pipeline is coming up with a truly DCC agnostic system. Um, full service art department for creation and execution of digital map paintings, two and a half digital environments, character environment concepts and previous. Steve uh, covered that pretty well. Uh, scalable proprietary pipeline ensures maximum efficiency for every project size. This goes back to what I was saying about having our, our, our pipeline be uh, state of the art. Um, we are uh, incorporating uh, all the latest technologies, UX designs. Uh, we're, uh, we're using USD based data exchange, uh, super fast web based UIs so that uh, interactivity is very quick uh, so that we can get true multi DC uh, interrupt interruptibility. Um, steady growth so over the last 12 years, including around core talent and broadening areas of expertise and this again goes back to the key thing of any pipeline and that is talent. Um, and that's, that's why we're here. We're trying to get the best talent we can. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Bryant. Um, now Ty's going to talk us through a little bit more of, oh, Ty's going to take it away on this slide. All right. Hey everyone. So this slide is going to help show the difference between uh, art and technology and the different roles that we have in our, our departments. So um, being in school, I know everyone wants to get their hands into a little bit of everything. And sometimes you lean more technology based or you lean a bit more creative and on the art side. So starting from left to right, uh, concept design, pure art, uh, drawing uh, the designs or the environment, uh, strictly creative driven. Uh, when we make our way to the right, a little bit, a little bit more technology-based, editorial, character animation, asset development, modeling, and compositing. Um, so these are a little bit more uh, uh, technology influenced, but still very, very heavy art-based. Uh, then right in the middle, we have lighting, rigging, materials, textures, previs and layout, and hair, cloth, and sim. Now these departments and roles, they have a little bit. Of, of both ends of the spectrum. So you find yourself working creative and also implementing more um, technology, uh, a lot of different um, tech-based uh, material. And then when we make our way to the right, there's motion capture, tracking, match move, effects, smoke, fire, building destruction, and muscle simulation. Now these are definitely more tech influenced and a bit more da data-driven. Um, and start to incorporate more pipeline based uh, scripting. Um, but when we get to the far end of the spectrum on technology, we have rendering crowds of CG systems and tool development and pipeline. These roles are, provide the backbone to our studio and keep things uh, going from point A to point B, very scripting heavy and a lots of different tech is involved. Awesome, thank you, Ty. Um, so I know you guys have heard, you know, we've talked a little bit about the pipeline and so forth. Um, uh, but now Brian's going to talk us through more of a progression of how things move through and kind of flow through the studio from point A to point B. Go ahead, Brian. Sure. So um, the first step uh, in any, any uh, show is going to be the concept design. Um, which is where the our, our you know our digital map painting and, and concept uh, departments can uh, come up with the ideas and quickly go through uh, different creative um, broad strokes that uh, can give us a direction. So that when we really start applying the you know we hit the gas and we start going in a certain direction, we know that we're going in a direction everyone agrees on. So. That's kind of a very, very important part is, is uh, setting setting a path. Everyone agrees on that path and then go. Uh, so uh, the first step um, in the CG portion of that would be uh, building the assets. And building the assets requires modeling, uh, texturing, uh, and rigging. Uh, once you have that asset, it's like a self-contained sort of uh, thing, uh, you will then publish that into the pipeline. Animators can then take that finished asset 
and do their animation to it, uh, you know, put it in the scenes, you build out the environments. Uh, when everyone's happy with that stage of the process, you will then hand it off to the effects and the hair cloth sim, um, where uh, you, you generally only want to be doing that type of high expensive, com computationally expensive uh, processes on finished animation. So animation gets signed off on, you send it to the effects department, to the, to the hair cloth sim department. They run it through their systems, put the hair, put the cloth, fire, smoke, whatever, whatever the shot calls for. Uh, once that's complete, that goes to then the lighting department. Uh, the lighting is kind of what makes it look nice. You know, you, you, you makes it look integrated into the scene um, and where the real look uh, is developed. Um, rendering is the, you can tell by the color here, it's a very technical uh, part of it and it usually is. Uh, sometimes you'll render stuff and you'll just get a bunch of errors. So uh, you have to you have to dig through a lot of uh, a lot of output to try to see uh, what could be causing all uh, those problems. But you know the idea is at the very end you get a very very pretty image element that you hand off to compositing, and then compositing is what makes the real finished product uh, that goes into uh, the editorial and into the show, and that's the pipeline. Fantastic. Thank you. Hopefully that gave you guys a little bit of a kind of, you know, you probably <clears throat> experienced a lot of this in, in school and similar, but just kind of how things work through, um, you know, work through our <laughs> studio on this level. Um, all right. So Steve now is going to give us a little bit of kind of some of the realities of the difference of working as a working, uh, it says compositor, working artist versus kind of, um, you know, being in school. So Steve. Yeah, um, I've been compositing for about 25 years now, and um, I absolutely love it. I cannot imagine myself doing anything else. And I just want to state that right off because there's there's pros and cons of being a compositor in this environment, in this in this industry. Um, so I just want to briefly kind of tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. But first of all, it's extremely rewarding. You know, you get to go to work and you get to make pretty pictures all day long. And, you know, and you get to and then and then when you're at home and you're watching TV and you see something that you worked on come up on screen or if you're at a movie theater, you know, that is so cool, especially when you were when you're with your friends and you're like, hey, I did that. You know, it's it's just very rewarding that way. Um, then you just like I said, you get to express your creativity. Um, I, I mentioned here that there's button pushing. So that's another aspect um, of compositing that you kind of got to get used to. Uh, you, you don't always, it's not like being in school where you're making your own project. You know what you want. When you're working as a compositor, you're realizing somebody else's vision. That's what they're paying you to do. So sometimes they give you creative freedom and they kind of come in and uh, they say, here, just make it look cool. Okay. <laughs> I've had that happen. Uh, but then there's also the director that comes in, they come in with a, uh, a, a, an image that they took off of a website or off, off a magazine. They're like, here, I love this. I want my moving footage to look like this. And you basically just got to push the buttons. You got to know how to get that done, keep the creativity down to a minimum and just make it look good. Um, then there's also the camaraderie with your fellow teammates. Um, Young students like you, this is going to be your social life. You're going to be at the office a lot doing this. Um, so your teammates are going to become probably your friends and you'll be spending a lot of time with them. So you're going to have something uh, in common because you're working on the same projects and stuff. And that's, that's, that's great because my, some of my long, longest friends are the people that I started out with. Um, and then there's also the financial rewards. Uh, like I said, it's great to go in and make pretty pictures and, and earn money, uh, but the money could be pretty decent. Um, the, uh, the budgets can, uh, you know, the budget's tight, but there, there's a rate uh, that, that you can make um, that, um, that, you know, I, I, like I said, I've been doing it for a while and I just can't imagine myself doing anything else. I'm not gonna talk about other careers, but you can make pretty decent money working in the industry as a compositor. Um, on the downside, 
you, there's there's long hours. You got to be flexible. Uh, you got to be um, ready to work at all hours. Um, but that's you know when you're young, that's exciting. You know because you're you're working on a big project that's that's going to be on screen, um, and you get paid for it. You know you're not working for free. So if you're working at 2 a.m., most likely you're you're you know you're making double time. Okay, <laughs> so that's not a bad thing. Depends how you look at it. Um, I already mentioned about creating someone else's vision. That's something you got to get used to. Uh, you're going to have your own opinions and things like that. So you got to know your audience. You got to figure out when to give your opinion and when not to. So you just got to that comes with uh, that just comes with experience. You know, you you might get out there and you'll make some clients that understand how you work and you understand how they and they'll just keep coming back to you. <clears throat> and that's that's great. And then you really love your job because, you know, those people inside and out. Um, but then there's also the clients that come to you and this is their baby. You know, the, just think of your student project. Everything revolves around your student project. Well, this is their project and they're getting paid to make a TV show or something. So this is everything to them. So yeah, sometimes there you got to deal with uh, people getting angry and patient because you're not moving fast enough or some other reason may not be you, but they're taking it out on you, but that's going to happen in any business. Um, and then you're also dealing uh, with a deadline pressure, uh, which is uh, very common. And like I said, it's in every, any field, but uh, we feel it a lot because there's air dates. These shows got to be on the air. So you can't just say, we'll have to reshoot and get to it next week. There's money, there's, there's air dates. So uh, you got to deal with that. And then that all that can lead to stress burnout. We see it all the time, but usually you take a few days off and you're good to go because, um, you know, you enjoy doing the job so much. So that's kind of the pros and cons of working as a compositor. And like I said, I've been doing it for 25 years and I can't imagine doing anything else. Awesome, Steve. Thank you. Brian, did you want to add, is there anything, I mean, this is obviously spoken from the vision of comp, but <clears throat> a lot of those probably ring true in general of being just a working artist or anything else that came to your mind while Steve was going through that of a difference of being a student versus a working professional in our industry? Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of the same. It's it's a lot of the same in the 3D world, you know. It's uh, it's it's incredibly re re rewarding. It's um, it's fun. I mean, you you have to love it because mm -hmm. if you don't, you're gonna burn out and 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 w wish that you had done something else. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if, yeah. if 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 your passion is is like the the you know the <laughs> mixture of art and technology and storytelling, then then this is gonna be this, this, this is going to be a very warm place to be. Uh, yeah. so, so, so that's, so that's important. And then, uh, I would say the other thing, uh, is just, you know, uh, you know, when you, when you, when you leave school and you, and you, and you go into the workforce, you know, uh, your learning never ends. You're always, always going to have to learn. You're always going to want to learn. And if you have, a, if you're a naturally curious person, and if you are, always uh, wanting to learn new stuff, then you're going to thrive in this business because it's mm -hmm. always about learning new stuff. Like I learn new stuff daily and that's never going to change. Fantastic. Thank yeah. You. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Steve. Okay. So the next, this is for me also. Um, I'm just going to give you some advice on what makes a strong compositor and what you can do to get there and stay there and improve and grow. Uh, first of all, uh, kind of like what Brian had said is you, you got to want this, you got to be motivated. And those, the people who are motivated move up quick because, um, you just want somebody who's going to be, uh, flexible, um, and they're just going to really work hard to, to get the job done. Um, and then I mentioned that flexibility, you just, like I said, uh, the way the industry is, you could be working at 2 AM, um, one day and you could be working at. 2 p.m. the next day. It's it's you just got to be flexible. Um, it, it's it's the way the the industry is moving with the streaming shows. It's it's thrown a little bit of a wrench into the gears. Like it used to be, like if you worked on a television show, you'd shoot episode one, you'd work on episode one, episode one would air. Then you'd shoot episode two, work on episode two, episode two. It's not like that anymore. It's like they do these binge you know, they, the binge deliveries. So you could have 10 episodes of stranger things 
and you're working on everything at the same time. So you could be working on episode 10 and all of a sudden they want to drop 150 new shots on episode one and the delivery doesn't change. So you just got to be flexible with your schedule, but uh, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. It's um, it's you, like I said, if you want it, it's you, you'll make it happen. Um, and then, uh, you know, having strong creative and technical skills. Yeah. It's it, you're, you're an artist. Um, it's, it's, that's how you're usually classified a visual effects artist. So you really need to understand um, uh, the technical uh, uh, things, technical nuances of your software and also know how to make, make pretty pictures. Um, and then ability to follow directions and collaborate. I bring this up because I used to work in commercials and I'd have like 25 clients in my room all at once. So you kind of got to figure out when everybody's telling you what they want, you got to figure out who to listen to. You got to figure out what they want and, uh, and learn how to collaborate and add because they're also leaning on you. You're the expert sitting in the chair. So they may say something. You're like, well, I got this tool that probably get do something a little better. So you got to be able to collaborate and uh, interject when it's appropriate. Um, you got to have a hard work ethic. Um, you know, it's you got to want this, but it's just like being a banker. You got to want to be a banker. I mean, uh, you could do it as a job, but you need to enjoy it. So, <clears throat> um, and then warm personality. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're you're working a lot of hours, and you may have a client come by. And they don't want to sit there with somebody who's got a grumpy face all the time. You just, you know, you, know, you want to be friendly and, and um, show that you're, you're collaborating and you're willing to work. Um, and then you also need to know, now these, all these kind of fall together, knowing what makes a comp photo real, what makes it look real. So as a compositor, you're the final step. So you're taking all these random elements, whether they're, they're photographs, whether they're plates that were shot, whether it's CG, whether it's effects, smoke or something like that. And it's up to you to blend them all together and make it look real. Because if you if it goes out there and that CG car looks like a, you know, a, like a, something out of a video game, you're going to hear about it and you're going to have to go back in and rework it. So what makes those comps look real? Well, you got to understand color theory, what colors work together. How, you know, if it's a, if it's a, Magic hour at 5 p.m. How is the sun going to light your scene? Is it going to be warm? Is it going to be cool? Um, you got to understand the lighting and shadows uh, because that's, you know, without light, we have no image. So you got to understand how the light falls on your scene. Um, you got to understand the shadows because that's what sets anything you do into that scene. Because uh, if, if it's not right, the car may look like it's floating or just disconnected. Um, and then you also have to understand depth. Um, and that's like focal depth, depth of field. Uh, when you look at mountains, how do they fall off in the distance? You know, what happens to the colors? What happens to the focus? Um, so you really need to understand that stuff um, uh, and why it happens. And that's, those are the key things to uh, being able to make a, a shot look good. And how do, you, how do you learn those things? So one thing I always tell people is you need to surround yourself with those tools that allow you to learn. Like, like Brian said, you're always learning. You need to keep an open mind and become a student of your environment. You need to, I, I say, surround yourself with art books and photography books um, and just and even when you go outside and you go to your car and it's a sunny day, look at look at how the light hits your car and how the shadows bounce off your tires. You know, it's not just a dark shape. It's like you're going to have a contact shadow. You're going to have fall off shadows. And then you're going to get shadows from a different direction because the sun is hitting the car next to you, which is bouncing the light off of that. So it's it becomes the, the, the shadows are very complicated. So the sooner you open your eyes to that kind of stuff and you you watch and you just look at everything in your environment, it'll become a second nature. So when you get into these shots where they want you to do something like this, you don't have to think about it. You know what you need to do. So I think if you follow all these steps, you'll be on, you'll, you'll definitely be on your, your way to being a strong compositor. Awesome. Um, 
Steve, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for that. I think that's really practical advice. And one thing someone once told me um, or was telling students a while ago, which I think really rings true here on the slide is mm -hmm. you know, your real, your real will get your foot in the door, right? It's like, and obviously you have to be, you know, you have to have a good person, you know, you have to be someone who will fit in with our team. But some of these things that I think that Steve's talking about is what'll keep you in the door and mm -hmm. what'll keep you advancing, yeah. right? It's these, it's these sorts of um, soft skills and being a student of life, uh, you know, and continuing to educate yourself and, and all mm -hmm. that that keeps you here and keeps you moving up. So, um, so anyway, thank you for sharing. Yeah. You're welcome. All right, let's move on. Mr. Summers, you want to talk us, talk to us about all our parties and fun? <laughs> of course. <laughs> so like, like Steve and Brian have, have said, there are long hours here. And what helps that is that we not only love what we do, but we love who we do it with. Um, we, we have dog friendly offices, which everybody loves. You can bring your, your, your friend, your dog friend to work. Um, we have contests. We have, um, you know, we, we make our, our desks up in Halloween and we see who does it better. Um, we have wrap parties. We have bake-offs. And, and really, it's just to, we do work long hours. We do need to uh, decompress. And, and this definitely helps and, and the, the environment that we, it, it helps the creative juices. So, and that's what we strive for. Awesome. So we actually have a committee and it's run by um, our employees. It's, it's a, a committee called Fun Effects. So not Fuse Effects, but Fun Effects. And we take our fun very seriously here, you know, it's very, very important. And uh, we're still doing a lot of this stuff and we're not able to do all of it, but we're still trying to keep this camaraderie and these sort of um, things going virtually uh, as much as we can. So here we are talking about something you guys are probably ready to hear about, which is what do we have available and what are we looking to hire um, in terms of this uh, upcoming year? So we call the Fuse Academy, this is like our entry level kind of uh, opportunities. There's a few different uh, ways that we um, kind of bring in, um, you know, recent graduates into our studio. Um, internships, apprenticeships uh, are kind of the two big ones. And then obviously we, PA would be your entry level role. Um, in the production side. So if you ultimately don't want to go the artist route, or the tech route, you want to go, you know, eventually to be a producer or something like that. PA would be obviously that job that you would be that starting job. And a render wrangler as well would be kind of an entry level on the technology side. What I'm going to focus on, we are not conducting internships this year. Um, we are actually going to be focusing on the apprenticeships this year. We do um, intend to bring the internships back at some point. Um, but this year, uh, our focus is on the apprentice side. So I will let Annie kind of give you a, what, what is the difference between an internship and apprenticeship, right? So Annie's going to kind of talk to us a little bit more about what our apprenticeship program is here at FuseFX. Awesome. Thanks, Maggie. Sure. Yeah, so this year um, we kicked off the first apprenticeship program here in New York. Um, so we had two apprentices come join us um, within compositing uh, back in March. And what we did was for the for the initial round is we did a week of training. Um, so during this training, um, our head of 2D and other senior leaders of the, the 2D department led different workshops for a couple of hours each day. And um, that was kind of, you know, the subjects that we kind of went through were different kind of the shot workflow, talking a little bit about time management, effective communications, um, our compositing pipeline, um, our in-house proprietary compositing tools, effective keying techniques and templates, um, batch comps, and really a lot of it was definitely honing in on kind of specific methodologies for common um, types of shots that we work on um, to get our apprentices up to speed with everything. So during this time, we had those workshops. In addition to that, on downtime, the apprentices worked in kind of production shots and practicing and going through them with our head of 2D. After the first week, um, you know, once they completed that portion, they kind of jumped right into shot work. So they started working on shots. They, um, you know, 
worked very closely with our head of 2D and also, you know, other senior leaders to ensure that, you know, kind of any kind of guidance, um, but they kind of jumped right in and they have been doing an absolutely fantastic job. Um, so, you know, we are hoping, or we are doing the program again. So we're doing it in LA in August and we're actually expanding it from just from 2D to 3D as well. So we're gonna be bringing on five within each department. Um, we will likely be expanding this also during that time at the end of the summer to Vancouver, um, to Atlanta, and hope to do it again in New York as well. So it's been a really, you know, rewarding program. It's a great opportunity to kind of learn the kind of, um, you know, the insides of, of, um, of Fuse and the kind of basic methodologies and really get up to speed and then kind of jump into everything. Um, so we're, we're very excited to do it again and, and we are, we're very looking forward to, you know, continuing to talk to students about it. Awesome. Thanks so much, Annie. Okay, Ty, you want to take it away and what we look for? Yeah. So we look for a number of things in our candidates, competency in art and technology being number one. Um, we're looking for strong, critical thinkers, problem solvers, good communication skills. Um, specifically people who are resourceful. Um, so beyond just the classroom, a lot of the different tools and techniques that you've learned, um, we're, we're looking for individuals who can problem solve and find different ways to effectively complete a shot a different way if something's not working, um, going roundabout ways to get things done. Um, they're able to work independently and as part of a team, communication and collaboration is incredibly important. Um, we're looking for someone who's uh, able to meet deadlines and type tight episodic timelines. We work very fast in television. So speed is very important and being able to let go of the ego and let go of the art sometimes in order to deliver some shots. Um, we're also looking for very honest people with integrity and respect for others and the work environment. Again, this goes back to collaboration and teamwork. Um, communication is very key to be able to work in a tight deadline in television. And lastly, but not least, we're looking for those who have the ability to embrace the concept of ongoing career long education. It's a, it's a learning process. You're gonna to continue to learn uh, new techniques and new software, and we're looking for people who are willing to adapt. Awesome, thank you, Ty. Okay, so Ty talked to you a little bit about more about like the general skill sets, like sort of traits that we want to see in our candidates. We thought it would be helpful for you all to see examples, actual examples of reels of people who did end up getting hired in our studio. It's one thing to talk about the work and kind of what we look at. And there's another for you guys to see uh, a visual example of that. So Ty, if you could pull up Ashton's reel, Ashton and Claire, Steve's gonna talk to you after about what stands out to him on this reel and overall what we wanna see in a strong example of a compositing reel. Okay. And um, while I pull this up, this is a reel of someone um, like from when they were graduating, something that they had ready before they worked on professional work. So, um, whoops. Here we go. Okay, everybody. All right, so um, I've, I've looked at uh, thousands of reels and I kind of know what I'm looking for. And this reel kind of hits a lot of what I'm looking for. 
Um, and I'm just going to give you some things to keep in mind when you're building your reels. Um, first and foremost is best. You got to put your best stuff first. Uh, most likely you're reaching out to a recruiter who's really busy and to sit down and uh, watch a reel. You want to make sure, you, you know, you're going to, you're going to have their attention right when they hit play, but you may not have it at the end. So you want to make sure your best stuff is right at the top to keep their attention. Um, variety. Um, I love to see variety in, in, in the work. Like if you, if you're doing, um, like a show that has several different, uh, driving comps. Well, I, you don't have to show me every single driving comp, you know, as you show me one or two that I know you can do them and then move on to something, some other kind of uh, shot that you've done. Um, and it's the same thing with CG. It's like, I want to see the CG work that you might do. And I want to see practical elements, uh, because if you can use practical elements, uh, whether it's stock footage or photographs you've taken, you know, nothing's more real than real. So if you have a real element, I'd love to see you use it. Um, then the other thing which I like about this reel is it's it's quick. He's He doesn't have a lot of stuff, but it's quick and to the point. I get it. I understand his strengths. So you don't want to be too long because like I said, you're going to get the, the recruiter's time. Um, so you don't want them to you know, uh, start getting bored. I hate to say it, but, uh, so you want to put your best stuff first and you want to, uh, make sure it's not too long, but then again, not too short. I would say three minutes is ma is the max. I wouldn't really go above that. It's like at, by three minutes, we, we understand what you can do. Okay. And then breakdowns, this is very, very important. Um, you need to show what you did on the shot because if it's a big Marvel movie, there could be 20, 30 people working on one shot. And if I'm just seeing the end product, that doesn't tell me what you did. You know, uh, there could be several compositors working on the shot. You might have, they might have assistance. So I, I want to see what, what was your contribution to the shot. So this, this one, this reel we just watched was very clear. They had a breakdown, an animated breakdown, um, which I, I totally got what they were thinking and what they adjusted on each level layer. Um, but you can also do a separate sheet that kind of breaks down what you what your contribution was. But you need to be uh, um, you need to be descriptive of what your input was. And then you also need to know your audience. Um, this is just one of my, uh, I, I, I guess, a pet peeve that. You, we could, I could get a CG person that switched over to be a compositor and they're applying for a job, but they still have all their resume stuff is listed as CG artist first. They know Maya, they, you know, Blender, whatever, and it's all first. Well, if you're applying to be a compositor, I want to see the compositing tools first on the resume. Um, I want to make sure that that's your, that's what you want. You know, I, I don't want to, it's kind of like the master of, uh, jack of all trades, master of nothing. I want to see that that compositing is what you want, and you're motivated, and and you're going to show me the examples of of, of work. And it doesn't have to be. Uh, I'm not concerned if it's a big Marvel feature or something like that. The latest uh, heavy CG movie. It could be student projects. But if I see if I see how you put it together. That's that speaks volumes. You know, if I can see that you've uh, provided a good breakdown and you've put practical elements in there and real and then uh, CG, whatever, then it really tells me, it gives me a glimpse of what your skill set is. Awesome, Steve. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I'd add to that quickly, and I think Steve touched upon it, but just really that quality over <clears throat> quantity. Like we know where you are in your career. Yeah. We know you're all junior. We're not expecting a ton of high, I mean, we know that you're just starting out. And I've been in so many reviews with supervisors where everybody, they wanna put everything on there. And you got a reel that kind of goes like this, you know, and and it's, and they're like, oh, they like, the, this is good, this is not, and they're not quite sure. It's better for you to just put the best and, and ask yeah. other people's opinions to make sure that you are, um, are focused on quality. So yeah. Can I, can I add one more thing? Yeah. Yeah. And course, like course. I said, I don't want you to be intimidated when I talk about Marvel movies or something, nobody should be intimidated because that really doesn't hold a, a lot of ground. Uh, because those, those teams that do those shows, you know, you've seen the credits, 
there could be hundreds and hundreds of people and they they're just getting warm bodies basically and they're taking another template and putting everything together so that's not really showing me what they can really do but if i see a student project where it's your project and how you put it together like i said that speaks volumes to me and that just really shows me what you're capable of doing awesome okay. we're going to do this one more time on the cg <laughs> side with bryant going through a reel and then we will be ready for uh to take some questions uh from the audience so um, this is a reel of somebody who was actually hired here like a year or two ago as an intern. Um, so we'll go ahead and pull her reel up here in a minute. Brian, you want to talk to us a little bit about? That? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. The reel is great. It, it it shows a good understanding of of, of modeling, uh, how to model with very clean topology. Very important to get make sure that your renders, uh, you know, look good and don't have any any weird uh, errors in it. Good good uh, understanding of light, uh, texture, all that sort of thing. But the, the the best thing about the reel, I thought, is that as you're watching it. You, 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 you know, you're like, oh, this looks like a real of like somebody that would be like a, a asset or a, an environmental modeler or, or something like that. And then when you get to the end, you realize, oh, that's exactly what, what she, what she is. So her real, uh, really does, uh, showcase exactly the type of position that she's applying for. Uh, and that's what you want to see. Cause when you're, when, when you're, when you're, uh, you know, trying to fill, fill a position, you uh you you tend to have like a need you know we need an effects artist we need a character animator we need uh you know someone who can do like environmental modeling and so to be able to to see a reel that covers exactly that uh is 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 just which is is usually you know exactly what you look for or, or even a even a, a a 3d generalist if you if you some people, you know, we need 3D generalists. And if you're going to be a generalist, you just have to make sure that your, your real showcases the fact that you are doing all these different facets and that you have a, a good understanding uh, of each one of those. So um, though that, that, that was my, my first impression of that. Um, but other than that, it's, it's very much the same as, as what, what Steve was saying. Uh, it's very much the same as compositing, you know, show your best stuff first. Um, don't don't stuff it full of a lot of the same things. When, when, once we we see something that shows that you have competency in this area, we're like, okay, good, great. You know, you don't have to keep showing more and more and more of the exact same type of thing, um, because that you know we, we 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 have so little time during the day to do this sort of stuff. So you have to you have to take you have to, you, have to, you have to keep it easy on us. You know, <laughs> um, the breakdowns are great. Uh, so that we know exactly what you did. Uh, to echo really quickly one of Steve's points, um, yeah, I mean, you, you might feel if you're going up against somebody who has all these Marvel movies on the reel, like, oh no, you know, I'll, I'll, never, I'll never get hired over them, but that's not true because we know what goes into a, a huge shot in a huge 
tent pole type feature. And we know that there's many, 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 many artists involved in that. Uh, and we are going to put a lot more weight into an individual thing that you did yourself, that we know that you did all these pieces that you had full creative control over. We will put more weight into that than we would if you worked on the big planet exploding shot from the latest blockbuster. So, uh, so, so, so don't be intimidated. Uh, you know, if, if, if you, if you, if you're good, we will find you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Well, everybody, that brings us to the end of our uh, presentation portion. So we will send this um, uh, deck out to your, uh, you know, to people at your school so that they could get this to you in terms of like uh, how to get in touch with us. These are our job sites for our, you know, all three studios, um, as well as how to follow us on LinkedIn. Um, obviously, uh, you know, we we will be posting when we're getting the apprenticeships ready. We will you they will be on our LinkedIn. So if you're kind of following us, you'll be able to see it right when it comes up. And then finally, we're going to do our best to um, answer as many questions as we can within these last 15 minutes. But if your question doesn't get answered and you want to, feel free to please email email us uh, here at jobs at fuse effects and one of us um, will get back to you with some sort of answer just bear with us in terms of uh, it might not be within the hour because we're all very busy recruiting but we will do our best to get back to you as soon as we can so that is it for us now we'll go ahead and uh, take some uh, questions hi um Thank you so much for the entire presentation. It's so great and so excited to listen to all you all. And I will be um, I will be reading some questions from the chat earlier. Um, for great. the first one, uh, it's a question about apprenticeship. Will they be remote or in person? Very good question. For now, they will be remote uh, until further notice. So we're treating the apprenticeship as we are for hires, meaning right now everyone is fully remote at our studio. Um, however, eventually we will be going back into the office likely in some fashion. That doesn't mean we'll be there five days a week, but we will likely have some sort of hybrid. So, so as it stands now, these will be remote, but it's a possible that if we're talking a year from now, or if we do another one in winter, it might be some hybrid or some in-person situation. Cool. And here's another question. Um, are there any plans on making original content in-house, like how Blur does Love, Death, and Robots? <laughs> Anyone else? I, uh, Steve or Bryant, do you have any thoughts on that question? I um, I'm, I'm not aware of any plans uh, at, at like, like that are being worked on immediately, uh, but that doesn't mean that that's not something that yeah. we would do. I, I know I know some people have their own little side projects, which, you know, you never know. I mean, Fuse could end up taking a hand in it, but, uh, but as of right now, there's nothing uh, on the books. Cool. Okay, and here's another question about apprenticeship. Um, what is the deadline to apply for the apprenticeship? So once we announce the dates um, of when those are going to be, like like Annie said, we know August will be the date for uh, for LA. It'll likely be a four week apprenticeship program um, from start to finish, and then at the end of that, we will be evaluating the apprentices and potentially extending um, for a junior level role. Uh, that's based on our work you know, what we have in the studio at the time and how everything goes with apprenticeship. However, when we post these apprenticeships online and all of our socials, it will be very clear when the deadline is to apply. We don't have that yet, but we will make sure it's clear to you guys. Probably be about, I don't know, when we post it, probably a few weeks to a month after or something like that, maybe a little longer, but you'll it'll be clear. And I hope that also answers David's question for where do we apply for an apprenticeship. Yeah, it'll be clear. It'll be on our website. We'll have a whole separate section that you'll apply there. And um, we'll make sure you're, um, you know, you, you guys at the school, uh, you know, your administrators and teachers can pass it along to you. Okay. Um, here's a question for Demo Reel. 
when putting together for demo reel, what kind of skills do you think should be added, such as keying, tracking, CG, compositing? Uh, I can take that one. Um, so I think that it really depends on what you feel your focus is and what your interest is. So for example, if you feel you have a wide range of different skill sets, you can uh, lay out your reel to be more generalist based. Or if you feel that you're more geared towards compositing, definitely focus on the compositing front. Um, but that also doesn't limit yourself to being able to show some of your other skills, say at the end of the reel, if you want to show a more specialized skill. Awesome. Thank you. Um, okay. And does international students are eligible to work on CPT with their, uh, with their studies going on? Yes, it would be on an OPT. Um, so because the apprenticeship, this is actually one thing that you um, should be aware. Apprentices are for, for graduates. This is for people. This is the this is kind of the key distinction of an intern versus an apprentice. An internship is for people who are still in college and are going to go back. Apprentices, we're looking for people that are within, you know, a year or less of graduating. So for those students, we would be looking at OPTs. And yes, we can support an OPT visa. Uh, for the apprenticeship. Great. Um, and here's one for uh, dynamics. Uh, what's the current pipeline and most common software you use to create dynamics? Do you have integration with Unity? Oh, no, sorry, for Unreal Engine or Unity? Uh, okay, I gotta take this one. Uh, the current pipeline. Um, is uh, I would say the vast majority of our dynamics are created in Houdini, <clears throat> um, but we do use Maya and 3D, 3ds Max to a certain extent as well. But uh, but that would just be in a couple of specialty cases. But by far, Houdini is our uh, is our effects package. Oh, and I am also a Dynamics student. I'm curious about um, the dynamics as well. When in um, FX, for the FX artists in Fuse FX, do they only um, focus on certain type of simulations or are they also like uh, the jack of all trades doing all kinds of simulations? Um, we would prefer you to be uh, fully versed in, in the, the, the whole gamut of effects. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, the big three, fire, water, and smoke, um, but also uh, destruction, uh, all those things are in huge demand on uh, television shows and movies. So, um, you know, I, I see a question here too. I'll just I'll just answer because this kind of bridges into that. Uh, asking what we look for in effects reel. Um, <clears throat> what we would like to see is is these effects these effects being used in 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 a kind of a real world practical manner. So, if if you're going to show fire. Uh, you know, it's, it's great to have like a sphere on fire that looks like it came from like a demo or came from like a tutorial, but that's not going to inform us very much what, what you know. It just means that you can do a tutorial. So if you could have a, a you know, a, a car or some other asset, you know, flying through fr flame with like with mm -hmm. flames coming off it or something that would be applicable to a real world uh, usage of that. That tells us a lot more about how you know your your ability to create these these effects in something that we can use and would be valuable to the show. Cool, thank you. Um, okay, here's a question. Um, any plans to expand Fuse effects to Pacific Northwest, like Oregon, Washington, or Idaho? Um, I, not that we know of now. I mean, the closest Oregon, Washington. I mean, the closest probably be the BC office yeah. in Canada, but Vancouver um, is definitely going to be continuing to expand and grow a lot in the upcoming years. So that would be a pretty close to Washington. Okay. And can you talk briefly about the general work that happens at some of your smaller shops, such as Atlanta, compared to your larger office? Steve, do you want to take that one? You, 
it's pretty much the same. It's not really, you know, we share the work among all our sisters. I mean, we, ha we have to deal with tax rebates and incentives. So some work has to be done in Atlanta, some has to be in New York. But uh, when you look at our, our, our demo reels online, it's all pretty much the same clients. It's just, depend it, they're, it depends on where they get their tax rebates. I don't know if I'm answering the question, but uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's primarily episodic work. We do work in feature films and commercials. We just don't solicit that work. So it's, it's just, it's heavily episodics uh, geared. Okay, um, here's another question for building portfolio and demo reel. Do you have any advice for those students who just started to, like freshmen and sophomore, um, who are not quite ready for apprenticeship? Like, do you have any advice for them to how to find inspiration content to build a professional portfolio and demo reel? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, my, you know, my, my thoughts would be try to try to see if you can, if, if, if you can mimic the sort of, the sort of effects that you would see on, on a movie or a TV show. And, and obviously not like, you know, a hundred aliens and a and hundred superheroes colliding in a giant battle, because that, that would be impossible for a single person to do. But, uh, you know, some, some of the more, uh, common type of effects, uh, or, or shots, you know, maybe a, um, you know, I don't know, Steve, like if the, you know, some like maybe some like a, even a monitor comp, I guess. Yeah. So something, something that has very practical applications would be something that would be, we would look at and be like, oh, this is great. This person's ready to go. They, they, they understand, you know, what we need. Yeah. It's just practice, practice, practice. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know everybody's got like their own student films and stuff. Well, Try and help out. I, and I know you have to use other people and just make sure you're willing to help um, uh, on everybody's student projects. Yeah. 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 yeah and just to add, to, yeah. I think student projects are great, you know, and um, so everyone kind of is in their, <clears throat> in their respective kind of discipline. That's a yeah. lot more like how it is uh, working in the professional world as yeah. well. Exactly. And here's a question for compositing software. For compositing work for a student reel, would the studio prefer to see work done in one particular program over another? For example, Nuke over After Effects? Yes, uh, we are primarily a Nuke house. Our pipeline is designed for Nuke. We do have a small After Effects pipeline, but uh, we don't actively recruit After Effects artists unless we have some sort of um, need for it that's been asked for by the client or it's a, a motion graphics because there's still a lot of uh, value value to it but for the, our general workload it's primarily nuke i'm not sure about um our global uh sisters like rising suns we just same. acquired them same it's same yeah it's, yeah. it's nuke nuke is our our primary way of compositing cool um here's another question do you guys hire junior artists who just graduate from college? So that would be the um, best way to get your to make that bridge is, is the apprenticeship because what that means is you're going from school. The apprenticeship is about a four week training program, right? If all goes well and you demonstrate the skill sets we need here and the work lines up, then we would extend you as a junior artist. So that yeah. you know, and sometimes we will, Steve, hire. Um, yeah. You know, right out of school <clears throat> artists for sure as well. And, and, and we don't have the apprenticeship and we're trying to do more of that. But I think that's the best opportunity. Um, yeah, it, it totally is. And, uh, you know, I'd like to see more junior artists come in who have those uh, traits that I mentioned. Be, they're motivated. I mean, I had, I had one uh, supervisor say, I'd like to have 10 of these juniors versus one of my senior artists because they just loved the attitude and the motivation and you know the just the work ethic of of this particular junior so um yeah you can totally make it work great um so we're almost at time i guess yeah. i will have like one more questions for you guys um someone asked what are upcoming projects that your team is currently working on 
could, if you could talk about. Ryan or Steve, you guys want to take one of, you know, what we can, what we can <clears throat> talk about, I think. Can't, um, I'm, I'm not sure uh, what we can talk about. I know, you know, well, we do a lot of Ryan Murphy shows and there's, uh, you know, we do American Horror Story. We've done it from day one and now they're branching off. They're doing American Horror Stories. Um, I don't really know what's involved in that. Um, and then we, we do these uh, American crime dramas. We have a couple of those coming up and uh, I don't know what's going on in New York or. Yeah, I, I can only really talk about what I'm currently involved in and, and that would be uh, the 911 and 911 Lone Star yeah. shows. So that the, those are keeping me quite busy. Um, and we're, we're currently in production on those. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm I, I just don't know how much we can actually say. Yeah, that's we we have a lot of that um, that we have to kind of be you know protect uh, kind of the non disclosure. Yeah. So you know we obviously are releasing new reels all the time. We keep our website really up to date um, in terms of projects. So you guys just keep your eyes on the sites and keep checking. You'll see a lot more of our current work as we continue to um, you know work on it. All right, and I think um, we're at time. It's about uh, to stop here. Um, if you guys have any more questions, Ty just shared their LinkedIn. <clears throat> you guys could um, send them questions on there or there is like a, um, the email that you guys shared earlier. Yeah. Go uh, ahead and add it in right here, right now. So you guys will have it. Um, just put in the subject line, question from Academy of Art. So we know that, um, that that's what this, that, yeah that this is from this presentation. <clears throat> Great. Um, thank you guys again. It's very honored to have USVAC's team to join us today. And it's a great presentation. Thank you guys.